So hi everyone, um, thank you, thank you for coming. Um, yeah, I've been a bit busy today, so apologies if there's, uh, there's a few uh, last minute issues. Um, okay, so first of all, so we're going to talk through the, the CERT HE package, uh, which we've been uh, developing uh, for our model review. And I want to say, start by saying uh, thank you to, to a lot of people who have contributed to this, um, either in kind of contributing to the, the manuscript, which is in progress, and I'll share a, uh, a link to the, the, the kind of draft on, on the progress uh, in this presentation, but also people who have directly um, tested bugs and things in the package and contributed to the, the package itself. Um, so the overarching aim, and I guess the overarching aim, aim here in general, and I, st I start a lot of presentations with this slide, is to shift the, the modeling pipeline uh, from spreadsheet software MSXL to, to script-based programming languages. So, from the you know your survival analysis through uh, your say VBA code for a model um, to Excel plots, <coughs> Word outputs, and PowerPoint, we want to shift that pipeline, that whole pipeline, through to a system where we are able to uh, perform our, our stats work, our model, our plots and visuals, our reports, and our apps. So that's kind of like the big picture. Uh, kind of where can we get to? So uh, through various publications, a lot with, uh, with Paul and, uh, and Well in the past, we've worked with how do you build these shinies up, the shiny apps, how do you automate some of this reporting in, in markdown files. Uh, and then last year at RHDA, we presented on packaging op cost effectiveness models, so a structure by which you can create a package for a model uh, in a set format. And that kind of um, provides a structure and a template for how to, to encode uh, models in R. Um, and that looks generally quite similar to what most of the models that I see in, in R and view in R uh, end up being like. And so often we'll get models where we have you know, a big folder with a load of functions, a folder with a load of tests, uh, et cetera. And so we'll, we'll come to that uh, in, in a second. So that's kind of the, the background of the, the introduction to where we're, we're starting from. Yeah, and um, uh, so before um, Rob talks about the, the interesting stuff, um, I wanted to give just a quick uh, perspective on why um, we're particularly interested um, in shifting towards R um, from a, a farmer perspective. So um, for any individual asset we work on, we just have a huge range of potential models uh, that might get built throughout the, um, the assets development timeline. Um, but the thing I really want to focus on there is not the breadth of the models, but the breadth of the audiences um, that we work with both during the development phase and the output phase of the models. Um, you know, we, we talk to modelers, uh, clinicians, patients, payers, uh, people with lots of technical knowledge, people with very little technical knowledge. Um, and one of the things we really value um, in those experiences is being able to communicate the modeling process. Um, so, you know, when we build health economic models, the whole idea behind it is that we're building these models to uh, communicate a complicated clinical pathway and um, the impact a new intervention might have on that pathway. Um, and so it's really important for us um, that we're able to communicate to the right people at the right time. Um, and this just brings me on to, yes, or the couple of the key considerations for us. So usability and communication, um, just you know, the ability to develop uh, intuitive app style interfaces using things like R Shiny um, and um, you know, R's focus on data visualization visualization sort of is, um, is a huge bonus for us as we communicate these ideas. Um, the other two things, efficiency, adaptability, uh, are, are slightly more, more obvious. Obviously, it's, uh, it's great to have um, an improvement in computation time and, you know, as Rob said, pull everything under one package rather than having to look at Word, Excel, PowerPoint and kind of pull things in and out of things. Um, and then, you know, I guess the last one touches on being future-proof, um, you know, so we're, we're working um, with a lot of large language models these days and being able to include those within health economic models is clearly going to be um, a future direction for, for modeling in general. Um, and so I'll hand back over to Rob next, I think he's going to uh, talk through um, uh, this, this uh, package of tools which hopefully will help us not only QC models but also communicate that um, QC process which I think is really important. Um, <laughs> and thanks in particular to, to Tom and, and Yevgeny who are here who have been uh, helping internally to test some of what I'm going to talk about on some internal models. So we're testing it not only on some open source models but some internal models as well which has been uh, really useful and valuable. So um, you might imagine somebody says, can you re review my model? Um, so it might be that you've got uh, your big 
our model and they go to an ERG, or uh, it's a, a MTA and then you go to, to industry and somebody needs to review that, that model. And so those of you who, who have reviewed one of these quite more complicated, complex side of modeling type models will know that you end up with a whole ton of nested functions. It's very, very hard. You've got a load of scripts and it's very, very hard to even start. Like, where do you start with this, this process? Just understanding where th things fit together. Once you get to the code, you're kind of, you're right. It, how do I even start to approach this problem? So quite often you end up with, you know, tons of R scripts. Like, what do I do with all this stuff? And this is probably one of the well, this is one of the biggest criticisms of R versus Excel because everybody opens an Excel file, and yes, you've got a lot of tabs, but they're kind of fairly clearly labelled, and you can kind of click through and see how things fit together to some extent, uh, even if I think generally it's, it's it's harder. So often feel like this. So and then after panicking for a while, you kind of start moving through the code, trying to understand uh, the code base. Um, but what would be really handy to, to have is something that allows you to help review that code and ensure it's working as you, you intend and as it, as it says in the documentation. <coughs> so we built uh, the assert he R package. And the idea of this is to help modelers review uh, and build. Because obviously, building a model, you should be kind of reviewing the model as you're going along, making sure it's, it's uh, working as you intend. Uh, and you might have internal reviewers in your, your organization. And you might also want to convey the model to other people and explain it. And so having tools that allow you to do that are really useful. So there's two bits of functionality that we, uh, that we really focus on. So first is a whole series of checks. So those of you that have built models in R will know, as you're writing your code, you'll often add in a line that's just a check line after you've built something. So you create a transition product matrix. And you then have a line that says, do all the rows of this sum to one. You create a trace, do all the rows sum to one. Is this a numeric? Is, you know, is this the right type of object? Is it the right dimensions? All these little tests that everybody are, are writing independently makes no sense whatsoever. What makes much, much more sense is for us to have one package where we just have a function which says, check Markov trace, check transition property matrix. And that's how this, this um, um, kind of project started, was rather than everybody writing their own checks, let's pool our resources. We can all contribute to this package, which just then you just install package, check trace, check uh, transition property matrix, check that run, 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 run enough PSAs, all of that kind of thing uh, that everybody's kind of doing anyway uh, gets put onto a package. But then I got really carried away and, uh, and then number two started, which is how to summarize and visualize the structure of a model. So uh, what this does is it allows you to plot the function network. Um, so any model in R, if it's well constructed, should be a network of functions. So some functions are going to call other functions, um, other functions will be kind of standalone, um, but often you'll have nested functions where um, you have you know, a whole chain of functions. So function one calls function two, which calls function three, which calls function four. And so understanding how all those fit together uh, is really important. So what we've done is built this package which allows you to, to pass through you know, your project folder for your, pack uh, for your model. And it will then recognize it will, it will take a folder for the functions and a folder for your tests, and it will, will loop through all of the code and identify where the functions are, so exactly which line that they're uh, specified on, that, that they're created, um, and identify where the documentation for that function is, and identify if there's a corresponding test in a test folder. And so, as I said, there's two different ways to use this. So at the moment, it's just on GitHub, not, not Cran, um, as a development version. So you can just do dev tools, install GitHub, um, and then uh, library, assert HE, and then somewhere in your code, so you've got all your model code, and then somewhere in your code, you might want to you know, check that your transition properties array complies to a load of rules. And so if you look at the, that uh, bit of documentation for that function, you'll see all of the, the things that we're checking there. And so you can say, well, I'm happy with this. Um, this is what you know, lots of other people are using, so these, these checks are fine with me, and then it just flags if there's any errors. So in this case, uh, there's an error with this uh, array, and so it tells you your transition properties are not val valid for these different health states at these different cycles. Um, so this has been done before, and it's just an, an adaptation on, on, on other work. Um, but probably the more interesting bit is what I'm going to talk about for most of the rest of the session, um, which is to visualize a network of functions. And there's a single function that you can call here called visualize project. And what you have to give that function is a project path. So this is the project directory, the top level. 
where are the functions? The functions are in here, the R folder. Where are the tests? The tests are in the test test app folder. You could have them in somewhere else. You could have a function folder called functions or a test folder called these are my tests, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then you just need to uh, say whether you want to run uh, coverage of, of, of functions to see what the code coverage is like on those functions. So those are the different kind of arguments to the, um, to the function. Uh, as I said, there's a lot. So on the, on the first side, there's a, there's a lot of these different checks, and they're all kind of included in documentation. Um, yeah, like they're useful. Everyone's writing them. Don't think they're super, super interesting, but it's something that as a group, I really strongly believe that we should all be pooling uh, together. So if you do want to contribute a check that you're using internally in your organization, and you're just, you know, you're using it routinely, uh, then please uh, send me a pull request or send the code and we can build it in. And so eventually we'll have a whole load of these checks for different types of models. So currently we just have uh, Markov models, but we could have you know, checks for um, PSM, for um, uh, BIM, um, any, you know, any type of model, uh, all in one place so that, that everyone's kind of validated these, uh, this bit of code. But probably more useful is, is the model reviewer, so the visualization. So this is what uh, gets spit out in HTML from the um, from, from the reviewer function. And so this is the run six sigma model. And the run six sigma model has five sub-functions. So this the function in the middle calls those five. So the arrow denotes that that function exists or is called by the, the function which the arrow is pointing to. And this is a very simple model. So these five functions are called sequentially. So there's a parent and then five children. And these two functions here are not called by run six sigma model. They use somewhere else in the code base. Um, but what we can see is that, that very quickly, that those um, six functions in the middle all have tests associated with them. So it, it's gone through and it's recognized, these are our functions, um, these are names, and these ones have tests. So they're denoted in green. Uh, the one that's orange uh, is orange because it has a test, but its code coverage is between 20 and 80%, and the one in red doesn't have a test. So we can very quickly see where our functions um, and do they have tests and how, they, how do they fit together. Now obviously that's a very simple model, um, but we can click on any one of the nodes, so any of our functions, and we see the function name, we see where the function is located in our code base, we see where the test is located, and we see the coverage. So it's kind of a, like a summary of every constituent part of the model. Within this HTML um, output, we can create new functions, so just for discussion purposes. So say we had a meeting internally, and we run this visualizer, we get this output for our model, and we say, right, we want to build in this new part of the model, or this new algorithm into the model. We can construct our own nodes just in this visualizer as a communication tool to say, you know, now we're going to build this new function that does this new thing, and that gets called by an existing function. And that, that's our kind of plan going forward. So it's also useful as a kind of planning tool for your, your modeling work. But what's um, kind of really interesting from a future proofing perspective is we can generate a summary of any of these, these, uh, these functions. So the I symbol basically takes you, yes, yeah, so the I symbol basically takes you, uh, produces a pop up which displays the function code. Uh, the, uh, this symbol basically takes you to our studio, to that location, the function, as you expect. But this robot symbol, basically, uh, it generates a large language model summary of the function. So as, um, as we talked about already, large language models are not very good if you provide thousands of lines of code uh, and tell it to summarize it or tell it to talk about it. But if you provide it five lines of code, suddenly it gets a lot better. So if you have a model that's built up of lots of small algorithms and you send those to be summarized, suddenly uh, you get a much better uh, output and result. So rather than getting, you know, sending your entire model to be summarized, what's going on? We just we want to understand in layperson summary what does this one function do? And so then it, it generates a, a, a two paragraph summary. So just a short bit of text summarizing what this function does. And the way this works is is that when that button's pressed, the function data is extracted. So we take um, the body of the function, the arguments, and the oxygen code, store that all as data. Uh, create that, like pass that all together into a prompt, and then send that via an API request 
uh, at the moment to OpenAI um, and receive a response, reformat it, and then show it in the, the modal. So it looks like this. So from your um, clicking that button, you then just get this, this short summary. Um, and so we've run this as a, a few case studies. Um, so we've done the nice RCC model. So thank you to, to John and Darren that we heard earlier, uh, first presentation. Um, we've done the Six Sigma Pack teaching model that we, we published on a couple of times. Um, we've done the CDX2 CEA model uh, Fernando uh, published back in 2022, uh, which is an R package, uh, and, and several others that, that, that are described there. Uh, and then um, the GSK team have been doing some internally, and uh, several of you have, have contacted me and said thank you very much for implementing those internally and, and telling me about all the bugs in this software. Uh, it's been really handy. Uh, and for those of you who have uh, sent pull requests, um, to, to, to help improve it, that's, that's fantastic. Um, so the code for this is, is completely open source. So here's an example of one. This is the, the CDX2 biomarking, biomarker testing um, output. So you can see there's a the function network. It's actually slightly bigger than that. And then a, a summary of one of the functions that's, that's generated. This is the, um, uh, the, the Sheffield micro simulation model um, that was built by Dan Pollard. So this is kind of what that looks like, and then you can see a summary here of where the function is, function location, test location, and this is, is, is fully interactive. Um, and the same for the nice RCC pathways pilot. So, I'm going to use a couple more minutes. Uh, Do you see that slide I think? Yeah, I don't know where I put it. I'm just trying to find the... Uh, okay, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, if you want, um, I can send some, some examples. So it renders HTML output. Um, and so what that means is that you can then share that visualization via email to whoever you want to, to share it with. Um, so in terms of next steps, um, we welcome contributions, testing the software on your own models. The software is fully open source, so you can just download it from, from GitHub and test it on your own models. What we'd request is if you do use it, please let us know how it went, either say, find no problems or um, tell us what the, the issues are so we can help kind of improve this going forward. Um, we're going to expand some of the, the, the testing functionality that it does provide and also integrate. So at the moment, uh, it returns a, a, a two paragraph summary of, the f of each function uh, when you click on there. What we could do is build in sort of a, almost like a chat bot so you can ask questions about the function and, and respond back and forth, which is really cool. Uh, and then also we're looking at whether we can fine tune a large, large language model because we have a lot of teaching material uh, and so we can take that teaching material and the code and then fine tune the large language model so that it gives a, a better response than the, the model just developed by, by OpenAI, um, or we'd hope anyway. Uh, and then finally uh, a CRAM submission at some point. So if you are interested in, in having a look and commenting or you do have any comments, I'm conscious it's late and we want to get to the pub, uh, have a look at the the, the open access publication that's linked in is linked here and on GitHub, um, and and just let us uh, know. Feel free to make comments on there. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Conscious that uh, obviously everybody wants to get to the pub, so probably we'll limit this to two questions. So fingers <laughs> first. <laughs> Let's see if I can find. Who have we got? Who wants to ask one? Um, Rob, so obviously I love the package that you and testing and visualization is great, mm -hmm. but my main concern would be giving users a false sense of security. Because mm -hmm. this wouldn't pick, this is, this is not equivalent to a full verification check. Yeah. So it wouldn't pick up if the wrong transition populations are being put in the wrong place, or the treatments are being commuted, no, no, or the, these no. sorts of things. So there could be still something massively wrong with the model, which doesn't say 100% pass rate. So I think that caveat needs to be much clearer yeah. when you're communicating this tool. Uh, absolutely, yeah. No, so I mean, if your code is wrong, it's still wrong, right? Like this is for visualizing the model. Mm -hmm. um, it won't, it won't necessarily find the errors. I guess what I would say is, as an industry, we probably aren't very good at testing our own code, and like people from software development would probably come in and look at healthy economic models and be like, uh, like <laughs> you guys aren't doing a hell of a lot of testing, and so maybe this will nudge people towards at least writing some tests, even if the tests don't pick up everything. At least there's some. Um, and it's a start. Do we have any questions on the chat? Uh, oh, sorry, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's great soul from the <laughs> Thanks, Jonica. <Okay. laughs> okay, so are, are there any plans to make your visualisation an art studio add-in? Uh, no, no, I don't, I don't think, yeah, to be brutally honest, no. Um, <laughs> I think that'd be great. If asked you to call me up and want me to come come, come work on it, then, then great, but no, not currently. 